I wrap Stan, and here we are with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this is Tuesday, the 5th of December, 2023. Well, we're in what we call our work week. We could call it jobs week, and that would be better. And that's because today we started off with the JOLTS report. Well, we saw the job openings and the people trading jobs and all, but we lost the amount of ads for jobs by about six, 700,000. Okay. That's what the Fed wants to see. And we're seeing people are staying in their jobs. And so far, not a lot of price uh, pressure on wages. That's good. We're going to get the ADP numbers for private jobs tomorrow. And I think we get Challenger Gray. It's either tomorrow or the day after. And then Friday, we're going to get the U.S. jobs report. And as you know, next week, we get the FOMC. So that's when the Federal Reserve will tell us what they're doing. This is going to be a boring meeting because it's widely expected. They're just going to sit tight. They don't have a reason, as can be, to raise interest rates. So not much. It'll be the press conference. I don't know when we get our next dot pot. It might be this one. I'm not certain. Traders will certainly want to look whenever that one comes out. I got to look up when the next one is. Um, earnings season's pretty much over. You know the battles that are going on in Congress. Can we give money to Israel? Can we give money to Ukraine? There's going to be a vote in the Senate tomorrow on Ukraine, but it doesn't matter. It's not binding on the House, and the House is going to keep tying that they want the border under control. They want money for that. They want it to come to them, and then they will approve this. And guess what? They are right. And Schumer will say all the way he wants, Chuck, they're holding us hostage. You bet you're being held hostage, because the only thing you understand. So you want money for all this? Give us money for the border. Let's get this thing under control. And it is a political year coming up. So if you don't do it, you're not going to be able to support your allies. I like the Republican position on this way better than I like the Democrats. I'll never understand why we have the open border. I welcome immigration. I want them to be here legally. I want them to be documented. I want them to get jobs. I want them to fill the jobs that as we get higher and higher in wages, they want to take on and have a chance to build families. Who doesn't want that in their right mind in America? That's how our families came here. But this open border, I live in a city that's overrun with migrants. Everywhere you look, these aren't, the ones I see are nice people. I, I give money, I do whatever I can. Typically, they have children with them, young kids, babies. You know, you feel terrible. Where are they going to go? Uh, they can't work is the problem. Why? Because the federal government. They let them in, and then they make it where they can't work so that the cities have to support them. Then they put them on a bus to send them back. Does this sound right to anybody? Something wrong here. I wish I had political will. I have zero. Um, a firm. Okay. You know what I think? I think Christmas is coming, and I think the season will be there, and I think people will spend what they don't have, and I think they will line up and pay as you go. So, yeah, there'll be corrections, but I still very much like what I'm seeing. This stock is still on its way and running. But after that, got to be careful, because you don't get another holiday spend until what? Valentine's Day, and that's not that big of a spend. So be careful here is all I'm saying. You're going to get to the point where the market will get in time ahead of itself. But at this point, a bullish market, the 18-day over the 100, 100-day average of close over the 200, the market has been over it. And what do I teach you? I teach when you have this pattern, it means the bias is up. You're not even thinking shorts. You're only thinking to yourself, long positions and where. Next, let me come back one. The Bollinger Band. 5% of the time will a market stay over a Bollinger Band. And when it gets over it, I counted this for you yesterday, so I'm not going to keep doing it. I think you were at six days yesterday. It's rare to be beyond five. You will step to the right-hand side as you're doing. You don't have to drop. You can do this going sideways and down. You watch this to get an idea if you're gonna drop. It is the combination of what the slow stochastic reading does with the upper Bollinger Band. That is the key to it, as far as I'm concerned. And 
when the red line closes back under 79, that takes me away from a buying mode. Until that occurs, if this market tomorrow were to just drop and not take out today's high, I'm very interested in a firm on the long side. Rivian, I think you're in sideways action that is winding itself up for a, right now I'm gonna call it a base. It's what it looks like but it needs to break out of it to get me excited and hasn't. Where's it stopping? The combination of the 200 day average, this gray line, and the black dashed line is the upper band, Bollinger band. You only stay out of the Bollinger band 5% of the time. And a 200 day average is a one year average, if you think about it, okay? What, you know, what are there, 200 and some odd business days in a year? So you're basically that, that's what you're fighting. Get over it and stay over it, bye-bye. Then the market moves to the next tier, whatever it's going to decide that is. It's not a market I'd wanna be bearish, I can tell you. Not yet. In UGA, in the gasoline fund, all right, uh, as I'm looking at the chart, I see it caught between the upper Bollinger Band, similar to Rivian, and the lower band. You've traveled from the lower to the higher, and you're going sideways here. You don't see the similarity of these two? You should. You always pay attention. It's from here, big trades come. You patiently are waiting, you're doing this with your thumbs and you're going, I gotta get myself ready for this. Then an XLF, the financial services. Well, at least you're getting a little bit of a bend. If you lose the embedded reading with it finally closing at some point under 79, then I'm gonna look for price in the 18 day average to come together. But until that occurs, on pullbacks in the market, it is still a buy. Out if that occurs, looking to see can you get up to the 36 level. Nothing has changed. And obviously the market's enamored, in love with the idea that there's so much talk of lower interest rates just gonna keep coming. You do realize 2024, if things pan out, is the year of lower and lower interest rates. What bothers me, and it should bother you, is why. And that's because the market is saying we're gonna have a slowdown. The degree of the slowdown is gonna be the way you trade for the year. I don't know what that degree is, nor does anybody just yet. The real bears are telling you you're gonna have a hard recession and the market's over exuberant, it's gonna be in trouble. The minis are saying, no, that's not the case. Everything is actually fine. It is gonna slow down, but employment is so good, it'll keep things well balanced. The Fed can drop and keep dropping interest rates as the market will lead the Fed into it, which the futures are doing, and you're getting that break. Up here, no, this is a profit-taking area. Now you're waiting for the pullbacks, and as long as you don't get the red line under 79, I stay in the bull camp. This is a common theme you're getting. Now, I left my bear theme in AMC the other day, and I am the guy that has been telling you I like AMC, right? So let me just walk you into this. I said I think that we're going to get to an area where the $7 range is probably a bottom. You've heard me say that here repeatedly now. Bearish embedded reading and then you lose it. Well, you went right to the number that should be the resistance, the 18 day average of closes at 732 and you're just backing and filling. Here's what I think is gonna happen next. Do you see how the upper band and the lower band are starting to wrap their arms? That often is a sign that happens when you're gonna go into the sideways action. So I can see another market that joins Rivian and the others as they wanna start developing sideways action. Okay, that's how you bottom in a market. If it can bottom, that's how you do it. RSPD, still bullish, and now it can get even more bullish. I realize that tomorrow, if you're down, you're gonna lose this uh, bullish embedded reading. This number will have no trouble on a lower close tomorrow if it's good and low. Let's assume it's just another 50 cents lower. I would assume it's gonna lose the embedded reading and you open the door up for the challenge here. But that's a nice challenge. When you get the 18, the 200, and the 100 day average together, you got me excited. On the other hand, the bears are gonna say, guess what, Ira, that's your turning point in the consumer. Why? 
He's running out of cash. He's spending the money that he made on COVID, everything he put away. Inflation is biting into it. And what this market's about to do is roll through that. And if it does, it's telling you the consumer's out of cash, which sets up the potential for the more bearish situation in what? The recession. You got to put the pieces together. They're rolling right now, but you haven't done that. So until the red line closes under 79, the pullbacks are still getting bought. In the spider home builders, well, I still like this very much. I didn't get to pay attention to what Toll Brothers did in the aftermarket. I have been buried, and we're still finishing up the sale that we had for Cyber Week, getting people signed up. So I apologize. I don't know what it did, but it'll weigh on the market, positive or negative. I'll know it later tonight when I sit down after dinner and look at the markets one more time. Um, XLE. Higher high, lower low, just a battleground in the marketplace. And obviously people are trying to figure out what next there. In the gold market, I don't think the story for gold has changed from its bullishness. It got ahead of itself. And now when you lost that embedded reading, I'm gonna walk you back here, okay? You lost it here, Monday. I want no part of it. I think price and the 18 day average are gonna make a run at each other. We'll see if I'm right or wrong, but that's what I would expect right now. And if they do, terrific. That's where the game starts fresh. Market, the pros, I think, took themselves out against the upper Bollinger Band. It was going higher. Silver's a classic case of that. Look at how it's coming right back into support there. It too lost the reading. You don't have to rush at these markets right now. Let them regroup. That's what they need to do. That's why you're getting these big moves. Copper market, you saw Moody's joined IRA in saying how bad China's debt is. I've been saying this for all the way through and I keep criticizing them going, they keep saying they're gonna save their housing. They're putting together a list of 50 companies, state and private, they're gonna give special loans to. Well, that was three weeks ago. They still haven't done it. Now they have two big meetings coming up this month where they set their economic policy. They're gonna give you the targets for GDP. They're gonna set debt to the GDP. Is it going to be 3.8% or a higher number now? Remember, it used to be 3%. Uh, they're gonna give you an idea what areas they're gonna throw money at in the economy. This is a big month for China. So pay attention and copper is probably not something I'd wanna own just yet. Everybody, Everybody is saying interest rates are going down in 2024, and that's why you're going up like that right now with the embedded reading. Now, the dollar, I don't think should rally if interest rates are going to go down. So I look at this as short covering rally more than anything. There is no picture here to trade off of. You've got a lower low, higher high. You're quickly approaching an overbought number. If you're over 70, you're overbought. I'll let somebody else want to own it. And that means FXE might be getting overdone on this side. And they're already building in in the swaps market that in the Euro, they're gonna go down 125 basis points this coming year, 2024, and that the US will go down 150 basis points. Okay, you gotta prove that you can do it, but I'm gonna to repeat to you, if you go down that much, why? Just remember, will this be the year where other things move and stock indices don't quite go with them if you're gonna be that weak? You gotta ask yourself those questions, but it's too soon. It's way too soon. Now, I'd love to give you access to my morning spider ETF for a short while. So no matter what this ad shows, do me a favor. Go to our website, irapstein.com, go in the free offers and sign up for a free offer and give yourself a try with it. This is the exciting time to get this. You, what I do here, is just the feeder for what I do in that. Because that's where I'm un unchained, if you will. Why? Because here, I, the government says, I cannot say you buy here, you put a stop there, you do that. That would have to be protected by a user ID and password, not out to the general public with a thousand disclaimers. I do that in the morning spider video. So just go to irapstein.com. Sign up for the free offer right there. If you have questions, get my staff. Take a look and see what I do for a week or so and you decide. 
hey, that's something I could use. I'm Ira. You have a good evening. I'll see you tomorrow.